Welcome to episode two of Talking iPad. So first up, I wanted to mention Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference, WWDC, is just a few weeks away. It kicks off June 22nd. This is where the next version of Mac OS, iOS, and most importantly, iPad OS are announced. I'm really looking forward to it, but it's gonna be a little different this year. It's gonna be held completely online. There's no in-person conference any uh, this year, at least. Hopefully those do come back. Uh, but I'm kind of excited to see what happens. I'm hoping there's still a keynote, but maybe they might just release you know, pre-made videos since there probably won't be an audience. And if there is an audience, it'd probably just be like a small group of Apple employees. But um, I'm, I'm curious to see what ends up happening. Um, so that's just a few weeks away. Obviously, I will be talking about the next version of iPad OS on here as well. So for today's topic, I wanted to talk about the Magic Keyboard. Uh, I opened up and started doing questions for Talking iPad, and you can send questions in using the hashtag Talking iPad QA on Twitter. Um, you can at me if you don't want them to just go out into the public or whatever. Um, I will put that information right here below and in the description below as well. So uh, first up, I got a couple of questions about the battery life hit on the iPad using the Magic Keyboard. So this is kind of a weird one. Um, some people, not everyone, but some people are saying and showing that their battery life on their iPad is way worse using the Magic Keyboard. I personally haven't been seeing um, a battery life impact. Now, I've definitely been using my iPad more since we're all stuck at home or I'm stuck at home and I'm just sitting here working pretty much all day long because there's not really much else to do. Um, I've definitely been using my iPad more. So normally I can go a whole day on a single charge for my iPad unless I'm doing some sort of like heavy video editing or podcast editing, something that just really uses up a lot of the CPU power and stuff like that, uh, photo editing, stuff like that. Then I typically have to charge, you know, in the middle of the day. Now on a normal typical day where I'm just writing or working or doing whatever, uh, I get to about the afternoon, uh, late afternoon, and then I have to charge it up again. Typically I just charge it in the morning. I don't know if this is Magic Keyboard related or if it's just the fact that I'm using it more. I really don't know. Um, it's really, it's kind of hard for me to judge. I think it's just because I'm using it more and that's what makes sense. From what I was hearing, the people that were having the battery life issue, like it was significant. Like you would notice it within like a few hours. So like I, I charged mine up this morning. I've been using it for a few hours. I'm still at 83% and it's only 7 a.m. So that's that's fine. Typically I get up at 5 a.m. So I've been using it for two hours. It was at 100%. That's, that's fine, I think, 83%. Next question, is this case the same material as the Smart Folio case? Yes and no. The fabric part of the Smart Folio case, like where the keys and stuff were, that's gone, which I'm happy about because that got really dirty and gross really quickly. It was nice when it was the butterfly keys because the butterfly keys notoriously had an issue. So the, the iPad Smart Folio case didn't have the issue. It was just the, uh, it was just the MacBook ones because those weren't covered. So that was that was fine for them, but now we're back to the scissor switches and the scissor switches have, haven't had an issue. So there's no fabric over those. But the case part, the hard shell plastic part that is the same material or very similar to the same material as the Smart Folio keyboard, it's fine. It, if you have like, oily hands or like something on your fingers, it will leave a mark. Um, the easiest way to get around that, add stickers. You can uh, uh, put stickers on it, make it fun, make it your own. Um, people ask all the time where I get my stickers from. Just go on Amazon, type in something you like, computer, Star Wars, whatever, and then put sticker pack. And there will be a whole bunch of options you could order from. That's how I do it. Another question that I got a kind of a bunch of variations from was why I used a mechanical Bluetooth keyboard, a magic trackpad, a laptop stand, and the magic keyboard. So this desk right over here is my main desk it's where I like write, edit, vi edit video, edit photos, edit podcasts, do all the sort of like I'm working on my iPad stuff. 
This desk right here I use for filming so I don't have to like constantly keep moving stuff off there. That's why I have two desks. But I have that set up right there so the iPad is a bit more ergonomic. Uh, when I did the Magic Keyboard video, I was kind of like showing working on the Magic Keyboard and everyone I was hunched over like that and whatever because I'm tall, I'm 6'1". Um, and people were like, oh, it's not ergonomic, it's not ergonomic, and stuff like that which I agree with, like it's not an ergonomic setup that I'd wanna work at a long period of time. Me personally, I was using an external monitor, so I had this guy plugged into that, um, and then I was using like a, ma a keyboard and mouse and stuff with it, which worked out fine, except for the fact that like my monitor doesn't have the best color reproduction. So I was getting kind of annoyed, like not being able to edit photos on it, not being able to do good color correction for videos and stuff like that. I was, so I took that off my desk, I bought a laptop stand, um, and that's been great. I actually really like that setup. I get to use a keyboard I like, I use the Magic Trackpad, uh, laptop stand, that's great for that. But when I'm away from that desk, like if I'm sitting here, I'm using the Magic Keyboard. If I'm sitting in like the, the living room or something like that, Magic Keyboard. When travel, whenever I start to get to travel again, it'll be Magic Keyboard. Magic Keyboard will basically be the keyboard I use everywhere, except when I'm at this desk. I am still really enjoying the Magic Keyboard. Like, I, I really do like it. It's It's been a fantastic keyboard. I got used to the small trackpad. It's not an issue at all anymore. I don't find myself like having any like weird, like not being able to perform gestures or anything like that. Um, I, like I showed you guys, I covered mine in stickers. I do that with all my keyboard cases. Um, I did get rid of all my other um, iPad keyboard cases. So the Smart Folio keyboard case, the Bridge one, the Logitech one, I gave those to friends. Um, I just, I don't see myself using them anymore. They could use them. So why would I just hold on to them and let them collect dust? So I gave those away. Um, and this this is my go-to keyboard case. I, I love the typing experience. In fact, uh, when I was writing the outline for this video and my uh, another script that I'm working on, I was sitting on my couch last night, just had it on my lap and I was just typing away. And it was great. It was, it was just like a laptop and honestly it is. But the typing experience is great. I love the magic keyboard i love the scissor switches that are in it as opposed to the butterfly switches um i don't have the tool to measure the travel but i feel like there's more travel in the magic keyboard as opposed to the the smart folio keyboard um but i don't know for sure but it definitely just it feels like a better typing experience at the end of the day it really is a laptop when i want it to be a laptop i have it in this case when i want it to be a tablet i just take it right out it it's, works perfect for that. Fun fact, since I started being coming home, I took all like those distracting apps off, Twitter, YouTube, all that stuff I took off this computer just because I wanna be able to sit in front of this computer and type away. And then my other iPad, I put you know all my like Twitter and stuff like that so I can still keep up with people. Um, but when I'm sitting in front of this iPad, my 12.9 inch iPad Pro, this is my work mode iPad. This is, this is where I work. My other iPad is where I can mess around online. All right, so let's do some Q&A. Uh, just like always, you can send in questions using the talking iPad hashtag uh, on Twitter. You can at me if you don't want it to just go into the void. Again, all that information is in the description below. I appreciate it being sent in via Twitter because it automatically gets added to a spreadsheet then where I can kind of categorize stuff and like, like I was kind of talking about, like that's how I got this topic for today. So that's helpful. So the first question is, I'm looking for a slim bag to take my 2020 12.9 inch iPad Pro and Magic Keyboard. Uh, one day I would like to leave the house again. Any suggestions? Yes, okay. So this guy right here, Waterfield Designs. Now they have sent me stuff in the past. This particular bag I bought myself. They did not send this to me. I purchased this with my own money. Okay, so this is called the Outback Solo. What's really cool about this is it's designed specifically for whatever device you order it for. So you could order it for a MacBook Air, an 11 inch Air, iPad Pro, or in my case, this one's made for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So it specifically fits that device. So when I put that in there, it's nice and snug. It's not rolling around. It's not getting flung around. Like if I was to put this in like uh, a big messenger bag or something like that, it would just, you know, go all over the place. The one downside of being is say you have, you order the 11 inch iPad Pro size and all of a sudden one day you wake up and you're like, you know, I really want the 12.9 inch one. Well, now that 
now you can't use that bag because that device is bigger. Um, so just be sure you have the device you want to order it for um, in mind before you order it. Also, it does have like really good part compartments and stuff for like charging cables and headphones and whatever else you want to put in here. I like it. It's really nice. There's a little back compartment and stuff like that. I did a whole review on this bag. I'm not gonna rehash all that. I did a whole review that I will link to in the description below. Next question, what's your favorite RSS service? What RSS app do you use to view on your iPad and why? So the service I use is Feedbin. What I like about Feedbin is they give you an email address. So when you sign up for newsletters, you instead of putting your email address, you put this email address in and uh, those newsletters now go to your RSS feed instead of your email inbox, which is perfect. Like I would much rather have newsletters there. So like when I'm sitting down to read stuff, I can take care of it. Like I can actually sit down and read that when I'm in my email, like that stuff I need to be responding to. Like you're not gonna respond to a newsletter. So. I think that's a really great service. It's five bucks a month. So that might be a little pricey for some people, but honestly, that email piece right there is worth it alone. I have a lot of friends that do newsletters and uh, I, I really wanna actually have time to sit down and read their stuff. So that that's worth it to me. The app I use is Net Newswire. What I like about it is it's, a, it's just a true native app. It has good trackpad support. It has gesture support. It's on all the devices. It works well with Feedbin. It's perfect. I, I really like the app. It's It's got a good, clean, simple design. If Apple was to design an RSS reader, that would be the RSS reader they would design. What did you mean when you said the iPad doesn't fully support external displays? From my research, there are adapters that allow a 4K 60 Hertz output. So what else is lacking? Um, it's not the resolution that I was talking about. It's the aspect ratio. So on the sides, if you plug your iPad into a 16 by nine monitor, which is a typical widescreen monitor um, or TV or whatever, you will get black bars on the side because it's at a four by three aspect ratio, which is great for a tablet, but no external monitors are made at a four by three aspect ratio these days. So it, you end up with these black bars and it just doesn't look good. So ultimately I'd like to see the iPad take up the full screen of an external monitor, whether that be 16 by nine or something wider. Now, I don't think it's gonna be, you know, be able to support one of those like 49 inch LG ones that are like 36 by one aspect ratio. There's no 36 by one, but you know what I mean? Like those are ridiculous. I don't think. Hmm, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. I, I had an idea uh, in a previous video that maybe the uh, extra RAM in the new iPad Pros is so that they can put up more apps on an external display. So maybe, you know, you have two apps in side by side right now, but oh, you plug it into I, uh, an external monitor. Now you can have three apps side by side because you have that extra real estate. The other thing too, is you can close up your iPad and plug it into a monitor and still work off of it with like an external keyboard and mouse. Um, but if you get to something that requires face ID, like a secure note or your password manager or something like that, it just sits there. There's no way to like say, go away, let me type in a password. Uh, you have to open up the iPad, do the face ID thing, and then you can close it up again, which is kind of annoying. And there's like a few little like hindrances throughout the system that just need to be tweaked. Uh, I'm hoping we see something in iPad OS 14 for that. All right, last question. Hey Chris, could you show your most used shortcuts in detail again? So I did a video, probably about six months ago on like what's on my iPad and what shortcuts I'm using. The shortcuts are still pretty much uh, up to date in that video. There's a few shortcuts that I made, but I've done videos on them. If you go back and watch the data jar video, I did a clipboard manager shortcut, which is really handy. And then I just did another shortcut video not too long ago doing a walkthrough on building an Apple Music shortcut that basically uh, looks at your Apple Music library and pulls a random album from it and starts playing it. I, those shortcuts I love. So basically uh, the data jar shortcut for clipboard manager, that that recent music, or I'm sorry, not recent, uh, the random music album shortcut and a, the timery shortcut that I've been using, those uh, for time tracking, those are the three shortcuts that I've been really using a lot lately. I've been building some shortcuts for like my iPad OS 14 walkthrough and stuff like that, but they aren't really relevant to anyone outside me. Like they're very specific to the way they work. Um, but I do have a, a spot on my website that I don't think a lot of people know about is there's a shortcut tab. You can go there. There's all these shortcuts there that you can download for free, completely open to everyone. Um, 
and those shortcuts will work for anybody. There's a short description in there and they're in categories. So some of them do require third-party apps. Like the ones I mentioned, like the data, the clipboard manager requires data jar, but data jar is a free app. Um, my timery one obviously requires timery and toggle. Um, I don't know, you can use a free toggle account. I don't remember if you need the paid timery account or not. Um, and then like my Apple Music one obviously requires Apple Music. So they're in categories there. You can check them out, you can download them. I will put the three that I mentioned below and the videos and the apps associated with them in the description as well. So that kind of wraps it up for this uh, episode of Talking iPad. This is episode two. Again, remember if you have any questions, send them in using the hashtag Talking iPad. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like these videos, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. It really does help out video creators, especially right now um, where everything's kind of in a weird flux, like that simple gesture really does help out. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.